is on trend right now, but removing walls can pose problems. Designer Michael Lambie shows us how he dealt with design challenges in his own home. When we purchased this house, we knew that we wanted to take out this large wall that divided up the space. We wanted it to be open concept, to really incorporate the two rooms together. Well, five minutes into that rental, we ran into our first challenge. This was the chase wall, which meant all the main guts of the house ran through this wall. So we had a really hard time figuring out where we're gonna relocate everything. One of the benefits is we were doing the basement as well. So with the exposed ceiling, we were able to see how everything ran and we were able to move elements of what was happening inside that wall to different sides of the house, including here. Like this is now our cold air return. Well, we have this big bulkhead here, which we created as an architectural detail. We used it to be the beginning point of our linear run, which we created this long entertainment wall. One of the first finishes we selected for the house was this beautiful walnut floor. Walnut can be very busy, but it's so rich that we wanted it to be the focal point. So we kept our walls white and clean, but we wanted to carry it throughout the space more. So what we did is we now used it as our trim piece through the large opening that we created. We also are gonna carry this into the kitchen as well. Now, one of the challenges we had with our tight timelines is that the kitchen was ordered before we took possession of the house, so we couldn't do any changing of the cabinets. A lot of older homes have bulkheads throughout the kitchen, and we weren't sure if it was decorative or functional. In our case, it was decorative, so we were able to remove it all, and what we did is we bought more walnut slabs and created this great detailing added a real contemporary sleek look to the kitchen that we already had with the shaker doors. The layout of the kitchen has changed. It's the same size, but they had a small island here and the, and the sink was in the middle. What we did is we put all the working features on one wall, dividing the room into two spaces. One's working and one's more eating. Here we have our stove, our sink, and our dishwasher. Because it's a very busy house, we love this feature of having a dishwasher drawer, two independent dishwashers. Really, really amazing feature. But we're able to actually have all the cooking and everything going on over here while the eating or the entertaining can happen on this side and still have a very clean open space. This space, it's gorgeous. Michael, there is a lot to think about when it comes to removing a wall. And even Definitely. though we know this open design trend, I mean, I walk down the street in my neighborhood and I look through all the windows and everybody's taking out no all walls. the walls. No walls There's no walls, but you actually have, there are things to think about when For it comes sure. down to taking away walls. For sure, from very basic to structural, right? Yes. So the very basic conversations be, when you take it on a wall, you have no place to put your art, no it's places true. to put your light switches. There's really no way to yeah. really decorate other than what's on the floor. That's right. So what we have here is we have the setup yeah. of the before, pretty much. So the, converse, okay. the conversation was obviously, we want to remove the wall. Mm -hmm. So this is to open up the kitchen space into the living area. So this was the floor plan before. Yes. So that's exactly what we did. So we removed the wall, we moved the doors. And then once you do that, you now have to re redesign your layout for your for your furniture. Right. So the conversation becomes, okay, what's your focal point, what's your accent, right? Yes. So the conversation became, let's really open up, let's remove this wall. Oh, so wow. When you do that, now you're looking at a massive space and it gets really, really challenging. So what would happen is, where does your TV go? So yeah. the conversation became, let's put the TV over the fireplace. Mm -hmm. Well, even if you put a 70 inch fireplace here and you're sitting over here, your friends are gonna be like, this is a nice TV, what's that, 24 inches? It's, it's just too it's fall. So <laughs> it's far. It's far exactly. away. Yeah. You gotta be seven, nine, tops 11 feet away from your TV. Right. So the span became way too long. So we're saying, no, we don't really need to create this much of open space. Let's leave this wall. Mm -hmm. Let's leave that wall just as it is mm -hmm. and let's create our orientation this way. Okay. So, so now what are we going to do with the TV? So now we're going to think, okay, the entertaining happens here and this is really what you want. You want to be able to eat, people talk, focus yeah. and be involved in what's happening. So we reposition the TV this side, yeah. which means your sofa is going to be in the center of the room. And it's amazing how much times I go, uh, go to a client's home and we're opening up and they're unaware that we're actually going to be looking at your sofa from all angles. That's right. There's no more wall to hide your furniture. No, and nor should your furniture always have to be against a wall. It's, it's, a, it's a tough concept for people to really embrace, but yep. you want to create zones within your space. So that means your sofa is going to go here. Is going to go here, and the back has to look as good as the front. Right. Because all these people, you're always going to be looking at the back. You're right? always looking at the back. In fact, you're looking at the back more than you're looking at the front because right. you're sitting on it, right? Right. 
But what this does is it opens up your space. We actually push this wall back as far as we oh, can wow. as well. So the key here is instead of having this little island, yep. we were able to maximize the space of the island and put one over double oh, the size. so nice. Because that little island would have just been floating in this big it's sea, floating. right? You can't really do much with it. Yeah. Now we can all eat, you can use it for the surface. Yeah. So the here's the key thing is we're still using the same amount of furniture just because you take out the wall doesn't mean you can double up your furniture yeah it's just orientation is a little different got and it your decoration your decorating is a little different okay so what else did you add that's so your chair here's a chair so yeah. now now we have to think about the flow and how we're actually entering um, we kept some space on this side here yeah. so now we're, you can have a conversation of if you have your distance between um, the two rooms, yeah. how do you decorate and how do you accent? We were actually accenting across here because our windows go this way. Okay. So we decided, okay, we're going we're gonna to create space, create flow so that we can flow throughout the whole space. Is this a buffet? Is this a console a table? A console table, okay. right? If you have more space and you're mm -hmm. doing it, as uh, on the other way, you'd put your console table behind yeah, this like that. sofa. Yeah. And so now you have surfaces to decorate. Your photos, your elements create personality. That's right. right. And it makes it makes a lot of sense. So you can actually see that in studio. The way you've done it, you've got a sofa that looks as good at the back as it does at the front. So it's right. finished because a lot of us have those sofas where the back the fabric's completely different or it's yes. unfinished. Yes. That's not gonna work in a space like that where it's open concept and you've got the console table. Exactly, I mean this happens to be beautiful from all sides. It's gorgeous. From uh, LT Market. Yeah. Um, so they have beautiful stuff, but in, in a sense where if you're not let's say replacing your furniture, mm -hmm. you wanna consider just buying a piece here. Now here's where you start accenting. So the focal point becomes here yes. from all angles and now this is one of the few surfaces you have where you can put your photos or whatever, or whatever the, um, your, your carefree items are. The That's stuff you right. really care about, this is what you're gonna look at. Or it can be a desk, you know? It can be a workspace 100%. on the other side. So when the kids are doing the homework, they are still close to the kitchen, they're close to the living room, um, and you've got their eye on, uh, on your eye on them as well. I just wanna mention also for this space, we talk a lot about the structural issues mm -hmm. with taking it down walls. For we sure. don't often talk about sort of the softscape and, the, and the, the, the traffic flow and all of that stuff. Structurally, obviously as a designer, was this a tricky? Oh, this I mean, you really knew what you tricky. were doing, yeah. but this had to be tricky. I mean, there's this, this is it. There's, there, right? there, there was nothing, and everything, as I mentioned in the video, everything was in this wall. So what we had to do is we had to create new destination points for everything. Okay. So for your cold air returns, your plumbing, your switches, your heat, everything was here. So what we wound up doing is we put some in this wall, some in this okay. wall, some in this wall, so we're blowing up. Having access in the basement is crucial at that point because you're running everything. Okay. So we did the basement at the same time. Mm -hmm. So we, when, when I'm renovating, we always say make sh your basement should be the last thing you do. Do your kitchen, oh, really? move all your plumbing okay. because you're gonna have to have access to it. Yeah. So in, in your hierarchy of renovations, top to bottom is how you do it. Okay, good stuff. Now let's see a picture of the space one more time. So we like, we love this. So this is how it looks now without the walls. Isn't that just gorgeous? This is actually- Beautiful. <laughs> This space, this is a client space. Right. And you took out many walls in that space? Well, well, this was an example of, for example, if you're coming this way, if your main entrance point is towards your living room and that's where you have your back of your sofa, yeah. that was an example there where pretty. as soon as you walk in the home, the sofa is right there. Yeah. So then we did this live edge uh, table here, has a lot of character, gives warmth before you even enter the space. Mm -hmm. So something to really consider. And then we didn't have to worry about what's the detailing on the back of the sofa. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Beautiful. So just do a little plan first, really yeah. think about your sight lines and that's what you create. Good little lesson there. Let's